Mama. I want to chat a little bit today about some stuff that nobody really talks about all that often when we have peed on a stick and realize that we're pregnant or going through the motions of pregnancy or after we've had our baby, some of the stuff that comes up for us at these specific times in our lives, right? When you first realized that you were pregnant, I'm sure there was tons of different feelings going through your head about what's about to happen to your body, um, to your lifestyle all of those things and then once you get go through your pregnancy and move through these motions a little bit new fears might come up about whether or not some of the stuff that you're doing is the healthiest options for both you and baby and then once we've had baby there's a whole bunch of unknowns about how we can move how we're supposed to eat um, and how we're really supposed to navigate having a child and bringing up a family and keeping ourselves incredibly healthy at the same time so let's go over a little bit of the stuff that sometimes pops up, right? The second you realize you're pregnant, you might start to fear, uh, can I work out? What am I supposed to eat? What am I not supposed to eat? Can I take supplementation? Am I going to gain a ton of weight during my pregnancy? What do I need to really be worried about, right? So many moms will say to me that they just have no idea how to begin to construct a plan to become fit, to get more fit, or to stay fit during their pregnancy because there's so much misinformation out there that we simply don't know what's right and what's wrong, right? And there's a lot of people who have been training for a while, perhaps, um, who assume that maybe they can just continue to do some of the same stuff that they have always done, um, but without really knowing what the benefits of exercise during pregnancy are and where we want to sort of make sure we avoid certain things so that we don't have problems with split abs and incontinence, so oops moments, which are incredibly embarrassing down the line, right? So. What I have done is compiled a program which basically walks you through trimester to trimester um, and develops and progresses as your belly gets bigger. And there are different things that become more important as we go along, right? Uh, there are certain exercises you simply can't do because your belly gets in the way. There are other exercises that just put way too much pressure on your belly, which already adds a ton of pressure because a baby is growing in there, um, which can cause you to have those split out. Abs, um, and cause you to have problems with your pelvic floor because you're simply adding too much pressure onto your core at a time when it's already really sensitive and vulnerable right so at each stage we need to take certain things into consideration not only that we got to look at where your hormones are at and how much your body is becoming loose in preparation for labor there are certain exercises you just don't want to be doing as you get closer to that labor day um, just for this the pure safety issue because our joints become much more lax now once you've had your baby there are certain things that you want to look at as well right because your tissues are you know in that more lax place because of the hormone relaxing, um, there are certain exercises you don't want to be doing right after you've had a baby as well. We all know that we get about six weeks of recovery and then our doctors will generally, if there's no problems, give us the go ahead to start working out. But there are certain things you still want to avoid. So again, putting excess pressure onto places that are still in recovery, right? Um, if you begin to do things like running, most people will do that because it's a go-to for dropping weight, but you're putting a lot of pressure on your body, which can contribute to split abs and incontinence. So off the bat, you don't want to be doing things like running or jumping or lifting really heavy weights for those reasons. What you want to do is exercises that are going to pull those abs back together and always be mindful of where your pelvic floor is at and continuing to strengthen and release the pelvic floor properly. So what my programs do is basically lead you week to week through each part of your pregnancy, uh, giving you the correct exercises to do so that you can maintain a healthy weight gain throughout your pregnancy, but also develop strength through your upper back, through your lower back, and through your butt, which have a tendency to get a little squeegeed because your boobs get bigger, so you come like this, and then you start to come forward because of that, right? Your belly is bigger, so you're going to start to have a little bit of a rounding through the back, which completely will turn off your butt muscles and cause you some problems with lower back issues and stuff like that down the line. So we want to 
make sure that you remain as pain-free as possible throughout your pregnancy and make it a little bit easier for you to recover. Not only by making sure that your weight gain doesn't get out of control throughout your pregnancy, but also making sure you're not doing stuff that exacerbates certain problems throughout pregnancy, which makes it harder for you to recover. If you do things where that really put a lot of pressure on your abs and stretch out your abs too much, even during your recovery, if you've dropped the fat, if your abs are stretched, so it's basically that connective tissue between your abs called the lineal alba, if that becomes really squishy and not taut like it usually is, even if you've dropped the fat, you can see how your belly might still look slightly pregnant because your abs are so far apart, right? So these are the kinds of things that we wanna take into consideration and make sure you don't have to worry about down the line with proper training. Now, proper nutrition is going to certainly help you with that weight gain, but it's also going to help you with your moods, right? Our hormones are already all over the map uh, during this phase in our lives. So it really helps to make sure that we're maintaining proper nutrition, maintaining our blood sugar, um, but also maintaining a, a variety of foods coming in so that we're taking in the right minerals um, and nutrients, not only for us, but also for baby. All right, so these are the different things that I like to be able to walk you through and make sure that you're 100% confident in so that you can have an amazing pregnancy, you can feel great, and you can recover faster, get out of those maternity clothes as quick as possible and feel really confident and strong in your own skin. So feel free to check out all of the pregnancy options. There is options for the first trimester, the second trimester, and third trimester. Now within these packages, your first trimester is going to basically be about two months, right? Most people know that they're pregnant around four or five weeks in, uh, so that is when we know we can start. So your first trimester is gonna go up until 12 weeks. Your second trimester actually comprises 16 weeks worth of training. So that is from week 13 all the way up to week 28. So there are four different training modules within this. And then of course, uh, your third trimester is going to be from what, week 29 on. So that's to 40 or 40 plus, sometimes a little bit earlier, depending on when you have your baby, okay? Um, so there are three different pregnancy options in that sense. You can also bundle um, your second and third trimester together, or you can go ahead and just go for the whole pregnancy and bundle all of that together as well. If you do that, you do end up saving 25%, which is amazing during this period of our pregnancy. Now, our post-pregnancy training, our postpartum training, that comes in a bunch of different uh, coaching levels and varieties for you to choose from. So with that one, I would suggest maybe uh, scheduling a call below so that uh, we can chat about it and you can know what your options are when it comes to your recovery. Now, if you are trying to conceive, this is another different ball game too, right? Because when you're trying to conceive, it's a really delicate balance between training properly and getting really, really strong without tiring yourself out so much that you can't actually get the deed done, right? So with this one, I also suggest booking a call. And here's why. If you are somebody who wants to lose a lot of weight um, prior to pregnancy, then I generally will focus on that a little bit first and then move into a trying to conceive program once you're closer to your ideal weight going into pregnancy. So that's something that I like to discuss just to figure out where you're at so that I can time your training appropriately for you. So if you're in that boat, I suggest also that you schedule a call below so that we can figure out what the best programming will be for you, okay? Um, thank you so much for watching this and taking your health and your fitness, your strength, your confidence so seriously during this incredibly pivotal, life-changing phase of your life.